Hello and welcome everyone. It's great to see you here ready to watch our first lesson. Now we're going to begin by talking about bird watching. And why? Well, because over this term, we will be learning about an artist who dedicated much of his life to drawing animals. His name is Charlie Harper. And of all animals, he loved to study birds in particular. But before looking at his work, which is our focus next week, we will start from the source, the very source of his inspiration. Today, we will be putting our artist glasses on to study photographs of common UK birds. The first of our little friends today is the tree sparrow. It belongs to the sparrow family. And the tree sp sparrow that you see here has a rich chestnut colored crown, meaning the top of its head, um, as well as the nape or the neck of its body. It's got a black patch on each pure white cheek. The adult tree sparrow feeds mainly on seeds and they tend to nest in holes in trees, in buildings and in nest boxes too. The best time to see them is in the winter. Next up, drum roll please. Of course, most um, perhaps the most famous bird of all associated with the winter. Um, robins are regularly used as a symbol for Christmas and all things festive. European migrant robins join our UK residents in winter in search of seeds and other energy rich food. Amazingly, robins are one of the only birds that continue to sing throughout the winter months. There you go. Next, we have a garden favourite, the cheeky blue tit. It's a UK resident with a similar diet to other winter birds. Their unmistakable blue caps and yellow breast add a vibrant flash of colour to winter gardens. And some have even been known Wait till you hear this. To tap through foil lids of delivered milk outside people's doors to snatch a quick meal. Oh my goodness, there you are. Here we have a chaffinch, which is a member of the finch family. The male birds are brightly coloured with a blue grey cap or crown and red rust underparts. The female is typically duller in colouring. For both male and female, the patterns of their feathers, and the words for this is plumage, help them to blend in when feeding on the ground. Like the other birds we've looked at today, in the UK, chaffinches do not migrate. They stay here in the winter months. Next, the beloved blackbird. As with most other species of birds that stay in the UK throughout the year, the UK's blackbird population is actually joined by visiting migrant birds from Europe and farther afield. Visiting species will sometimes have darker beaks than the blackbird we see here with its vibrant yellow-orange beak. Resident blackbirds are also thought to migrate to warmer areas of the countries inside the UK throughout the winter. Here we see what's called a goldfinch. Its yellow tinged wings and gorgeous red mask of its face make the goldfinch easy to tell apart from other finches like, oh, can you remember the one we looked at previously? Yes, the chaffinch, that's right. Goldfinches are often spotted at bird feeders during winter and their diets mainly consist of seeds. It's 
why it's so important if you do have a bird feeder in your back garden or um, perhaps in a shared um, apartment or flat block garden is to keep it topped up all throughout the winter. The next and final bird we're going to look at is my favourite. Are you ready? The wren, finally, is a tiny brown bird with an almost rounded shape. It has a fine beak, quite long legs, but very short wings and a short narrow tail, which is sometimes crooked up vertically, as you can see in this photograph. Now for such a small bird, it has a remarkably loud voice. Today, I'll be showing you how to draw a wren. Before that, if you want to do a quick quiz, if you're in school or at home with somebody in your household, can you name the birds that I've collected here? And as an extra challenge, can you spot the one that I've left out? You can pause the video now and have a go. And welcome back. I wonder how many you got correct there. And can I hear you all shouting out which I left out? Yes, indeed, it was the blackbird, the beady-eyed blackbird. How many other UK wild birds can you identify and name? Hmm, I can hear a few of you calling out. Yeah, a magpie. Yeah, I've heard a few of you saying that. I'm sure you've got lots more suggestions. Do have a think, have a discussion. What do they look like? Do you know what they eat? Do you know where you tend to find them? For today's art activity, you will need the following. You'll need a sharp pencil, A4 plain white paper, which we're going to fold in two, a black ink pen, a pot of water, some tissue paper for blotting, and if you're at home, your bird images booklet. I'll see you over for the demonstration video. Bye. Okay, I've got everything that I need here. My pencil, paintbrush, black pen and rubber if I need it. Do you use your water and tissue for blotting. Now I use tissue um, along with my paper and extra pieces underneath because it gives me smoother surface on which to draw. I begin by folding my A4 page in half to create A5 and I'm going to be using it as a landscape paper so I turn over and I want to first of all trace out with my finger roughly the size of the image and I don't want any postage stamp art here. Fill the page please. Starting off with the um, the crown of the head, moving my curve line into the pointy shape of the beak. Really sharp pencil allows me to get those nice clean points. And from the beak, moving down into a smoother curved line for the little round body. And moving then into the wing shapes here. Now notice the lovely upright crooked vertical tail feathers. Nice and pointed back up into the head. You can use your rubber if you make any new mistakes here. So I would sketch quite lightly at first. Just so that if you do have to rub out, it makes it easier. It doesn't have to be perfect first time. You're sketching here. That's a nice rounded curved under crest, the bottom of the body, down into the legs, which are perched holding on tightly to this piece of bark. Remember to draw 
what you see, not what you think you see. This requires really careful looking. And I'm starting now into the detail inside the body, beginning with the eye, round little beady eye. Here it's important to pick out areas where you can see light. Notice that little round circle of light in the eye, really important you keep that in. And beginning to create pattern of the short feathers in the head shorter dark repeated lines my top tip when sketching with pencil for shading is always go darker than you dare and lighter than you like exaggerating the dark tones and light tones for contrast you look at the inside of the mouth in the photograph there of the wren right in the innermost part of the mouth it's really quite dark got some medium tones going down into the light lightest tones in its little breast and notice the shadow accentuating the curve of its body so right at the outermost line and going darker again darker than I dare Same thing with the back leg to show its positioning behind the front leg in the foreground. Look at that shadow. Same thing applies for the underside of the wing. Back into some patterning here. And these are quite organic, natural shapes. So I'm not worrying about absolute precision, but I'm building up a pattern of repeated shapes, repeated shapes. I'm slightly lighter here, pressing a bit more lightly on the pencil. And then for you can see the smoother texture of the feathers. I'm holding uh, my pencil and lightly drawing. can use your finger to blend in actually with these HB pencils that works well some more patterning of the of the sort of speckled I would say speckled dappled tail feathers a mixture of lots of little light and dark shapes rubbing again with the finger to blend to smooth out the lines I don't really want to see the lines there because that's where the plumage, the feathers, um, we don't see any distinct lines. And I'm holding my hand, not dragging my hand, holding my hand upwards off the drawing, because if I rub my hand over it, it would tend to smudge. That particularly applies when we're working with um, inky pen and paints back up to the crest of the head. You can return as often as you like to darken those lines. These are longer line patterns here. building up a mixture of dark, light and medium tones of shade. I'm pretty happy with that so far. Filled my A5 page centrally. As I say, be proud, be bold, be confident. There is my tail feathers standing up proudly in relation to the little upright head. Going back over the eye. And notice now I'm using my inky black pen. And this I'm using to pick out the darkest um, areas of shading and detail. So we're turning to shade over the pencil lines. 
carefully at these points where the line work is really fine. This is a handwriting pen I'm using. As long as your black pen is inky, so ideally not a biro, this will work for a pen and a wash. You'll see where the wash comes in in a moment. My longer lines, quite loose. Going over those shorter shapes. And I'm just actually exaggerating one side of them up to the tips of the wing feathers, highlighting those nice, clean, sharp lines. This will work for any bird that you choose to draw from the selection of images in your handout. Remember, we're not thinking about colours, we're thinking about shade, lightness and darkness and where we can pick those out to exaggerate. Look really carefully at the beak there. You notice the top beak and right at the tip of the bottom beak, you find those dark lines appearing again. Looking at the bark texture, I don't want it to be as detailed as the bird. It might take away from the bird. So I'm going to um, really just work on the outline and some of the rough jagged texture. Not shading to the same detail that I did my little wren, but really just showing where those broken rough lines are in places on the bark perch. Okay. Next step, I'm going to take my fine tipped paintbrush, my tissue for blotting. Make sure your paintbrush brush is clean and dip lightly into your water. Remove extra water by blotting it, dabbing it against the tissue paper. And then start to go over those inky black pen marks with a little water. What do you notice when you start to add the water? Yes, my ink starts to bleed out, softening some of those lines, smoothing, and create the lovely medium shade of grey. Lightly dabbing, blotting, but remember to keep that little bit of light in the eye and not using your water and ink on the areas where it's lightest. Do sign and date your work, artists, and well done. You have got your finished product. Well done. See you next week.